Hey everybody, and welcome to another segment of AstrologyAnswers.com's weekly forecast. My name is Terence Scardino. The week begins on Monday, January the 22nd, 2024. Big important week because by Thursday we're having a full moon in outgoing Leo. Leo, a fire sign. Fire gives inspiration and enthusiasm. But let's start with Monday, January the 22nd. The moon is in Gemini. The moon remember sets the public tone, the, the overall public reactions. And in Gemini, Gemini, it's an air sign, it's ruled by uh, communication Mercury. So that moon in Gemini could have us more, you know, uh, more conversations, you know, more running errands, a lot of more busyness. Um, the moon, however, will be in opposition, which can be a confrontation with others to Venus. Now these are two benefic energies, the moon and Venus. The moon is this emotional bonding. The Venus is love and desire. But when they're in opposition, often you might be feeling that you're not getting your emotional needs met. But this only happens for about an hour to two hours, and that is early afternoon Pacific time. Then the moon leaves chatty, witty, restless Gemini and moves into emotional nurturing Cancer at 1.52 p.m. Pacific time. And there aren't any other planetary aspects after that, so the rest of the day, with the moon in Cancer, you may just want to stay at home, relax, just be with family. On Tuesday, the 23rd, the moon in Cancer will then be in opposition confrontation with Mercury, also around 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Moon is subjective and emotional but it's in confrontation with rational, analytical Mercury. This is when um, uh, discussions and conversations may get overly wrought emotional. Not a good time for having a heartfelt conversation with your loved one or having a business meeting. The moon will then be in opposition to Mars, fiery, impatient Mars. That's around 6, 7 p.m. Pacific time. That could trigger a lot of anxiousness, stress, jumping to conclusions, irritability. This too shall pass. It's only strong for about an hour. On Wednesday, the moon, continuing in nurturing Cancer, will be in harmony with empathetic, um, charitable Neptune around mid-afternoon. This, this, that moon Neptune can bring in this altruism, all this kind of uh, compassion and charity. But also at 3 p.m. Pacific time, the moon goes void, of course, until 11.37 p.m. Pacific time, at which point the moon leaves emotional nurturing cancer and goes into fiery Leo, setting up the full moon the next day. Again, the, when the moon is void, of course, it means it's no longer, it's changing, it's about ready to change signs, but it's not making any aspects to other planets, so there's no energy. So it's um, it's advice not to start important new events, projects, jobs, because the energy is flat. But it is okay to just continue to what you've been doing. It's also good for maybe doing a lot of introspection and review before you get into the next energies. So on Thursday, the 25th, is the full moon in Leo. The full moon brings a lot of emotions that's been hidden to the surface. It's a time of a lot of, of, a lot of emotional reactiveness. 
And in Leo, um, there's all this excitement. Leo is outgoing, it's extroverted, but there's one little issue here. Expansive, lucky, optimistic Jupiter will be in a hard angle, a square, to the full moon. Well, having a full moon in Leo is pretty good, and Jupiter is pretty good, but it's too much of a good thing. It's that Jupiter uh, influence, that challenging Jupiter influence, because it's a square angle, can can trigger overindulgence, spending too much money, drinking, eating too much. But because it's Jupiter, you're having a really good time. But you could be overdoing your enthusiasm. On Friday, as the moon continues in Leo, early afternoon Pacific time, the moon will be in a hard angle, a square, to unpredictable rebellious Uranus. Now that can trigger some unexpected emotional upsets. Again, it's only for an hour or two, but there's a positive potential because the moon can represent our emotional programming, the moon can represent our habits, and Uranus is all this liberating energy. So this could be a good time to be breaking a habit, but because of the moon Uranus, you might be feeling a lot of anxiousness trying to break the habit, but, it's, but Uranus is all this liberating freedom energies. The Uranus, that planet of insights and liberation, it's progressive, has been in retrograde for a number of months. As it, Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, they all go retrograde once a year. It's a time of just slowing it down, reflecting, resetting. But Uranus at 8.30 p.m. Pacific time on the 26th is going direct. So, it's, it's, so there's a huge shift of energies. And however Uranus, what it, it rules Aquarius, where Aquarius falls in your chart, um, where Uranus is in Taurus, where Taurus, where Uranus is transiting in Taurus in your chart, where that there could be a lot of release of energy, a lot of movement forwards. And the last half of the day on the 26th, the sun will be in a square hard angle to Jupiter that was being set up with the full moon on on Thursday. Now the last half of Friday, that moon, that sun Jupiter, again, you could be feeling overly optimistic, but then overindulging and overdoing. So moderation wins the race. But there's another big thing going on on Friday the 26th. The moon is going void, of course, for almost 24 hours. Very unusual. It's going to go void, of course, 1.20 p.m. Pacific time on Friday, but going on into Saturday until 11.11 11 a.m. Pacific time. Again, during that moon void, of course, just keep the course st stick to the routine, really advise not to introduce anything important because the energy um, to manifest whatever you're trying to begin could just fall flat. Saturday, the um, moon at 11, 11 a.m. leaves the void, of course, Leo and goes into Virgo for the rest of the weekend. Virgo is more practical, sensible energies. It's very service-oriented, maybe more focused on accomplishing work tasks or helping those in need. And the last half of the day, Pacific time, pleasurable Venus will be in harmony with Saturn. So with your friendships, your, your significant other that represents Venus, that this, with the influence, the positive influence of Saturn, you could be feeling more secure, more solid in your relationship, your friendship. 
Venus is also a planet of finances because Venus likes the, uh, the finer things in life that cost money. So Venus can also represent money and being in harmony with Saturn. Saturn is the, bi the pragmatic business planet. So the last half of the day on Saturday, especially after 11, 11 a.m., Pacific time is also really favorable for all kinds of business negotiations or even launching any kind of new business project. And then we get to Sunday, the 28th. The moon continues in practical, analytical, work oriented Virgo. And Mercury, the ruling planet of Virgo, will be in harmony with progressive futuristic Uranus. A day of Mercury Uranus is a day of thinking out of the box, coming up with original new ideas on a more mundane level. A lot of you may be more open to new technology like buying a new laptop, some new software, and really getting into all that technology, but being open to it, enjoying it. Also, Venus, pleasurable Venus, will be in harmony with Jupiter. This is a really good day for, um, for a party, for starting a vacation, for going to an entertainment venue. And since Venus also can represent money in harmony with Jupiter, you could be attracting more money. So Sunday, the 28th, is a really favorable day whether it's socially, financially, um, uh, you're just feeling a lot of excitement and movement. I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you next week with my next segment. Until then, be safe and well.